We all know the story of how people first populated the Americas around 14,000 years ago. Our ancestors walked across the Bering Strait land bridge back when Siberia and North America were connected during the last ice age. After fighting saber-toothed tigers in harsh conditions, they found a way to eventually blossom into complex civilizations like the Maya and the Inca. Independent from the rest of the world until Columbus landed in the Caribbean in 1492. But what if that's not the whole story? Naughty mummies? Before we start, it's important to mention that a lot of what we're talking about here today is speculation. But you know what? Speculation can be fun and informative, but it has to be done right, and we'll give you all sides of the story, the speculation, the debunking, and what still remains a mystery. The predominant theory that humans populated the Americas 14,000 years ago has already been torn up by the discovery of footprints in New Mexico's White Sands National Park that are at least 23,000 years old. So it's pretty clear that we don't have a strong grasp of just what exactly went on in South America before Europeans came over and wiped out a lot of its history. There are lots of wild theories of pre-Columbian contact between the Old World and the New World. Let's get into them. One of the most intriguing is the theory that the ancient Egyptians scampered across the Atlantic at some point thousands of years ago. The main evidence for this is that the Egyptians liked to party, that they partook in a bit of the white snow. The Egyptians might not have been bumping lines in bathrooms of Miami clubs, but archaeologists did find some interesting stuff in the stomachs and in the wrappings of a few mummies. Back in 1992, a German toxicologist found traces of both that white powder stuff and tobacco in the remains of several Egyptian mummies. It was curious because neither cocoa leaves nor tobacco grew in Egypt or anywhere in the old world back then. The only way it could get there was from the Americas. Boom. Proof that the Egyptians had an American connection, right? The findings were so sensational that the Discovery Channel came out with a documentary about this a few years later. Skeptics of the findings hit back hard. They claimed that early archaeologists in the 18 and 1900s were not super careful about how they handled these mummies, and that they smoked like chimneys. They also apparently used to treat the mummies with powdered tobacco, which acted as a kind of insecticide to keep bugs away. And as far as the white substance, all I can think of is some enthusiastic archaeology party. But who knows? Maybe the Egyptians like to party too. I'm on a boat. Another titillating piece of evidence for an Egyptian-American connection, or possibly a Sumerian-American connection, comes from the shores of Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. Don't giggle. Don't. A few miles outside of the capital of La Paz, Lake Titicaca is home to a mysterious megalithic site known as Tiwanaku. No one really knows when it was built or who built it, but whoever did, did it well. The stones are huge, perfectly cut, and astronomically aligned. Check out this one. Or this one. Or this one. Pretty impressive, right? Was it Egyptians? Did whoever built it learn from African architects and stonemasons? I mean, what's happening here? Nearby on Lake Titicaca, there is a tradition of boat building that dates back to ancient times. The Bolivians of the region built ships out of reeds. These reed boats look a whole lot like the papyrus ships built by the Egyptians, and also closely resemble the reed ships built by the Sumerians. I mean, the similarities are uncanny. But two cultures thousands of miles away who built similar-looking boats isn't enough to prove anything. However, the discovery of a bowl might change everything. The Fuente Magna Bowl, as it's called, was found back in 1960 near Lake Titicaca. It had some mysterious text inscribed on it, text that was unlike any other language in the region. Several scientists later realized it was written in a cuneiform Sumerian script that dates to over 5,000 years ago. When translated, the text on the bowl turns out to be a celebration of the goddess Nia, known as Nemu in Sumerian culture, the creator of worlds. Nia or Nemu was a common creator god in North African cultures and in Mesopotamia. There is also a frog inscribed prominently on the bowl, a symbol of fertility which has also been found carved into various stones around Tiwanaku. Could the Sumerians, one of the first great civilizations, a culture that, as far as we know, invented the concept of zero, could it have made it all the way to South America and then traveled into the highlands of Bolivia and then helped found a new civilization? Or was this bowl brought over much later during post-Columbian times? Or is there some other explanation? It's a fascinating mystery, but more evidence is needed. Old McHeads 
If we move a little farther north into Mesoamerica, we're confronted by another mystery that has ignited the pre-Columbian-Africa-America connection. The Olmec heads are at least 3,000 years old. They were expertly carved out of giant blocks of basalt, a hard type of rock to carve. At first glance, they seem to show people with distinctly African features. Some have claimed that their helmets are similar to the ones worn by the Nubian and Dogon people. More proof that Africans came to the Americas long before Columbus, right? Maybe not. There's been a lot of pushback on the Olmec heads as African theory. The heads actually also resemble the features of the indigenous people in the region, which does make a lot more sense. Still, we know almost nothing about the Olmec civilization besides the fact that they left some sculptures and giant heads behind. There's a lot that remains to be discovered about one of the oldest advanced cultures in the Americas. The King of Mali and a Transatlantic Voyage? What if some gossip between two African nations' royals could warrant a rewrite about how we think the Americas were populated? Back in 1324, the ninth ruler of the Mali Empire, Mansa Musa, was in Cairo in Ratamecca for the Hajj. Now, while there, he told an incredible story to an Arab emir, and it was recorded by the historian Al-Amari. He told the emir that he became the king of Mali in 1312 because his predecessor had disappeared across the Atlantic. Part of what the king told the Egyptian emir reads as follows. The king, who was my predecessor, did not believe it was impossible to discover the furthest limit of the Atlantic Ocean and wished vehemently to do so. So he equipped 200 ships filled with men and the same number equipped with gold, water and provisions enough to last them for years and said to the man assigned to lead them, do not return until you reach the end of it or your provisions and water give out. Of the fleet, one ship eventually returned. Its captain told the king that they had traveled for a long time until there appeared to be in the open sea a river with a powerful current. The captain didn't enter the ocean river and instead turned around and never saw the rest of the fleet again. The king was incredulous and did not believe what he was told, so he decided to make the journey himself. Mansa Musa went on. The sultan got 2,000 ships ready, 1,000 for himself and the men and 1,000 for water and provisions. He left me to deputize for him and embarked on the Atlantic Ocean with his men. That was the last we saw of him and all of those with him, so I became the king in my own right. Who exactly Mansa Musa's predecessor was is something up for debate. Some think it was a guy named Abu Kari II, but the history books are extremely foggy. What is certain is that the ocean river that was described by Mansa Musa does in fact exist. It's called the Canary Current, and it whips from West Africa across the Atlantic to South America. Is it possible that the Malayans or some other African or Mesopotamian civilization was able to harness this current to get to the Americas? Maybe, maybe not. In the end, when trying to answer whether or not Egyptians made contact with Americans before Columbus, we're left with more questions than answers. We do know for sure that the Polynesians made contact with the Americans before Columbus, and we made a whole video about that. You can watch it here. What do you think? Did Egyptians make it over to the Americas before Columbus? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Nutty History.